On this channel, I've talked extensively about Mars colonization. Indeed, it could perhaps be the biggest topic that I talk about on a regular basis, largely because Elon Musk talks about it all the time. But one of the biggest problems, one of the biggest barriers to colonizing this planet, or indeed any body in the solar system aside from maybe Venus, is the difference in gravity. We've observed the detrimental effect that microgravity has on the human body in terms of muscle loss, in terms of bone loss, and the bone loss problem is irreversible. Even with regular exercise, microgravity takes a toll on the human body, which means anybody who goes to colonize Mars and stays there for too long will probably be unable to ever return, and anybody born on Mars would certainly never be able to go visit Earth without some sort of major medical breakthrough in the future, unless we can find some method of exporting Earth's gravity to another planet. And I'm not talking about an O'Neill cylinder where we set up some sort of artificial gravity system on a space station in order to accommodate this, but rather set it up on a planet, allowing us to take our gravity with us wherever we might go. This seems impossible from even the most futuristic of engineering perspectives, or at least it used to seem that way until the Japanese came up with this. Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... So you gotta admit, this is different than any other Mars habitat I think anybody has ever seen. It is an amazing concept. Quote, there is no plan like this in other country space development plans. Our plan represents important technologies crucial to ensuring human beings will be able to move to space in the future, unquote. And by the way, that's per Yosuke Yamashiki, who's the director of the SIC Human Spaceology Center of Kyoto University. And by the way, this isn't some bizarre idea that somebody at some university came up with. They're collaborating with the Kajima Construction Company, a multi-billion dollar corporation, in order to make this a reality both on Mars and on the Moon. By the way, the Mars version of this structure is called the Mars Glass, and the lunar version is called the Lunar Glass. Now, according to the information I've researched thus far, this structure would be approximately 12 to 1300 feet tall, and it would also need to rotate once every 20 seconds in order to create that magical 1G. In my opinion, the whole water and sailboat thing is a little bit fanciful. I mean, why have a sailboat in an environment that doesn't really have its own weather systems and therefore wind? to push something like that around, but still the whole concept of having the water remaining where it is being kept in place by centrifugal force, the entire principle is pretty sound. You would obviously need something to seal in the atmosphere on top, which they seem to have built into the structure, but something that I find to be so amazing and so unique and wonderful about this design is it allows people to live on other planets without suffering from the reduced gravity. Now, to be honest, we really don't know what one-sixth gravity or one-third gravity is going to do to the human body over the long term. We know what microgravity does, but does that mean it's going to be less severe on other planets, or is it going to be not much of an issue whatsoever? We won't know until we actually start putting people on these planets for a sustained period of time. And by the way, as you can see, they have their own transportation system built into this design as well. 
Now, although they don't specifically spell it out, this looks like a lunar mass driver to me, or rather a modified version of it. The traditional lunar mass driver is a very long track using electromagnetic forces to propel a spacecraft or cargo or something along those lines to escape velocity on the moon. The moon is the easiest place to do this because you're only having to fight one sixth gravity. But as you can see here, the the vehicle is slowly picking up speed using the space provided by this spiral-like system around the structure until it transitions to another track system allowing it to continue the acceleration process. Why does it need so much space? Well, if you want to have human beings on this thing, you can't accelerate too fast, otherwise they're subjected to far too many g-forces which will probably kill them or at least cause them to pass out, which is something you probably don't want. That's where centrifugal force starts to work against you, is when you start using it a bit too much. But that being said, there's something else built into this transportation system that adds artificial gravity again. Like I say, the whole design is so damn innovative. Have a look at this. Now, once again, this works a lot better on the moon, so that's probably why they're illustrating this with the lunar glass habitat, but the way it works, once again, is to accelerate the vessel utilizing your lunar mass driver, and at some point, once it escapes from the lunar mass driver at the desired velocity, or perhaps at some point during the acceleration process, it becomes part of a hexagonal ship, six individual vessels all of which rotate. And of course, this rotating creates the necessary centrifugal force in order to provide artificial gravity once again. Now, it seems to me that it would be a lot easier to have these things dock with a hexagonal vessel, perhaps with some sort of space station in orbit, rather than trying to do it during the acceleration process. Probably why it's illustrated this way. Once again, a great deal of detail has not really been provided provided here. A lot of this is open to interpretation. Still, it's really what it appears to be. I've seen lunar mass drivers that kind of fit this description. The whole spiral setup allowing the electromagnetic force to build up speed before you achieve the desired escape velocity. And this is something that we can probably start implementing pretty soon on the moon once we get established there, once we have a nuclear reactor there and such. We won't need rockets in order to eject at least cargo from the moon surface and quite possibly passengers as well as time goes on. As you can see here, the ship spins, therefore generating that artificial gravity. It's a really interesting and unique design. And on top of that, you don't really need much in the way of propulsion. Maybe reaction control thrusters for the vessel or something to help it decelerate accelerate as it approaches, but Mars is going to be a little bit different because you have an atmosphere, therefore you're going to need heat tiles and other sorts of protection before you try to manage a re-entry, but once again it appears that there's some sort of space station in orbit detaching the vessels one by one from the hexagonal ship before you go ahead with a re-entry. Now, once again, you probably need some sort of propulsion system in addition to electromagnetic forces in order to make all of this work, especially on Mars. And also, the whole mass driver system is much more difficult on Mars because it has double the gravity of the moon. Therefore, you would either need a lot more space for your track system, or perhaps just use a different system entirely, or supplement it with some sort of chemical rockets. Nevertheless, this is a comprehensive system that would require a minimal amount of energy, at least for the rocket itself, as long as you had nuclear reactors at both ends for the electromagnetic system, and you could accomplish interplanetary travel this way. It is 
remarkable. And once again, you can duplicate the same kind of habitat structure, a little bit different on Mars, of course, but the principle remains the same. And they make another very good point. Even after terraforming, Mars still has the same problems with gravity, unless you somehow make the planet several times bigger than it currently is, you're always going to have those reduced gravity issues. Therefore, the artificial gravity habitats are going to be important and fully scalable. Look at the size of that one. You're talking thousands of crew members on a vessel like that. What I like about the entire concept and the fact that a reputable construction company is actually involved in this is the notion that the Japanese have amazing ambitions for the future of colonizing our solar system, a feasible way of making it happen. Now, they do admit that these sorts of ambitious habitats are not going to become a reality until the 22nd century. But don't despair, at least the younger amongst you, because they also intend to have a less ambitious version of one of these habitats operational on the moon by 2050 only 28 years away. So who knows what's possible, especially when you're talking about this type of innovation, this type of engineering brilliance, and also the kind of money that this corporation has at its disposal. Now, what is the point, some of you may ask, of just bringing Earth along with you? Why not just live on Earth except instead of on an alien world, rather? Well, here's the magic of these kinds of habitats. They allow you to explore places like the Valles Marineris or Olympus Mons or any place else on the surface of Mars, enjoy the benefits of one-third gravity and all the amazing things you could do in that kind of environment, while at the same time not having your body suffer from the effects of reduced gravity. As a matter of fact, a simpler version of one of these habitats might be all you need to use on a regular basis, perhaps exercising in one of these things a few times a day or a few hours a day or something to keep your body healthy. In essence, these habitats offer all the benefits of O'Neill cylinders, rotating space stations, whatever, and all the benefits of living on a planet. Plus, they're easier to construct, at least in theory, because all of the materials you need is already at your fingertips on the planet. It's exciting indeed, and I can't wait to hear more details as they become available. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, and also for those of you who have ordered a pair of sunglasses, please email me your details. All I need is your email address, and then we're going to send you a link to a form that you can fill out giving us all of your shipping information so that we can invoice you for the remaining portion of the sunglasses that you've reserved so we can get all of this wrapped up. Please bear with us because this is the first time that we've tried to do any merchandise in-house, but I assure you these glasses are awesome and you're going to have a pair very soon. And by the way, we still have 41 pairs left of this exclusive limited edition Angry Astronaut merchandise, so if you want a pair, if you're still interested, check the description for how to reserve your pair before they're all out. And as always, stay angry about space!